Natel on the local buzz. Welcome, welcome to the beach. You're at the beach yeah, and I'm in this dungeon right now. It's kind of wild. And I put on sunscreen right before this. <laughs> <Make sure. laughs> You're also in a different time zone because it's nighttime here in Nashville. So I'm jealous of where you are. But it's good to have yeah. you on the show. We've been spinning your song, uh, Sufjan Stevens. And I have to say, what's funny about that song is I never was a fan of Suf- Sufjan Stevens. Whatever you say his name, I never was a fan. I think it's because I was in a band with a guy who I didn't get along with, and that was his favorite artist. And so yeah. whenever I got your song sent to me, my first thought was, I'm not playing Sufjan Stevens on the buzz. It's not happening. And then I realized it was someone else so please tell me is that song about him and are you a fan of him uh yeah i am a fan of his i think i'm just a fan of like any music that's depressing I mean, yeah it's just kind of, i like it but uh that was just more something that i knew that just from like a marketing standpoint i thought it would be a good idea to make another dope artist the title of my track because and plus, I have no idea how to say his name. I thought maybe if I sang it in a song, I'd finally learn how to do it. So. <laughs> Same. I always try, I always stumble through the Sufjan or Sufjan Stevens every single time. Yeah. It's like that <laughs> and like a Bon Iver, Bon Iver. I'm yeah. Like, I don't... Totally. <laughs> it's almost too pretentious to even handle. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> and you describe your music. I love how you call it industrial nightmare pop. Did you coin that phrase? Because that's amazing. Um, it's been actually uh, like a combination of several conversations. Um, but I know the dream pop is kind of like a, definitely a popular genre. And yeah. I definitely don't write dream pop. So someone was like in conversation just said, no, you write more like nightmare pop. And I was like, I'm going to take that. Thank you. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> so I wish I could take credit for it, but I didn't. But the industrial kind of adjective definitely just comes from my influences and just loving darker, heavier stuff and I don't know. Yeah. No, I love that. That's what's cool about your music is like at the end of the song that we were playing for the local bus of the week last week, the Sufjan Stevens song, um, it was so cool to hear the song grow and grow and grow. And then at the end, it kind of became this almost like a Nine Inch Nails-esque kind of thing at the end. It, I remember I sent it to my boss. I knew. I was like, if you listen to this whole thing through, you're going to love it. And thankfully, he did. And, and he loved it. But uh, are you from Nashville, Tennessee originally? I wanted to ask you that. No, I'm actually from uh, Richmond, Virginia. But I've been here for about eight, eight or nine years now. Okay. So. Yeah, because you yeah. stick out. Like, I will say, like, I've hosted the show now for seven years. I've been here for about 10. And uh, you stick out in the Nashville music scene in a really good way. And has that been something that you think has helped you or hindered you kind of doing your own thing here? Um, I think it's, I get asked that question a lot. And I think about it pretty frequently, actually, because I think that being, I don't want to say unique because that feels kind of like self complimentary, but different, I guess, is an appropriate word in the genre that I write, um, it's kind of a double-edged sword because people uh, gravitate towards it because they're not used to hearing something like that come from a female, especially out of Nashville, Tennessee, but it also makes you riskier to believe in. Yeah, Um, I think that people probably, they don't want to bet on something that hasn't been proven, Uh, but if you can prove yourself and prove that you're different and that you're good and that you can kind of hold your own, you do seem like a more viable business choice. I mean, if that's what you want to say at the end of the day, it is a business after all. But. Yeah, no, it's so true. And I feel like uh, moving to Nashville, it's such a weird place. I remember coming here in 2011 and uh, I moved here and I was like, I'm a drummer. Let's let's go and start doing this, you know. And uh, yeah. the first thing I learned was that most people don't play Nashville all that often. I remember my friend took me to a club and there was some band. And he's like, oh, yeah, we never play Nashville. And so I was like, oh, I moved here to just like never play here. It just seems so counterproductive. But it's such an interesting place to be. And I do feel like there's a pattern a lot of bands fall into and they all kind of do their own a certain thing. And so when like artists like you come along and there's even like Lauren Strange, I know you're playing with on Friday, um, artists like that who stick out in a really good way it's always super refreshing because you're like oh okay finally something that's not the same formula that seems to always kind of work and i think when i was yeah. here originally the weeks were the band everybody was ripping off if you remember them oh yeah and uh now it's always something else but i think yeah it's important to stick out especially when you're in a town that's known for certain kinds of music country and, and pop and blues and everything else but yeah, i love totally. that i got i got some advice like a while back they basically said you have to be the best or you have to be yourself yeah and like there's and i mean i'm I think I'm a good writer. I think I'm a good singer, but I know that I'm not the best. I'm not the best writer I've ever met. I'm not the best singer I've ever met. I'm not the best musician in the world. So I just kind of had to go, all right, I'm going to keep my blinders on and just keep what I like as the North Star. And then hopefully that comes out with something that's 
people want to listen to because I mean, <laughs> I'm not going to sing like Carrie Underwood and I'm not going to write like <clears throat> Max Martin. So like, yeah. you know, I got to do something. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. And you've had, have you had a lot of luck with licensing with your stuff? I was looking on your website and it seemed like you did some licensing things. Is that, was I, I actually, see that right? Um, that's kind of an area that I would love to move into. Uh, but I actually just had, I do a lot of featured vocalists and top lining work in the electronic dance genre. Nice. And I just had a like a co-writing credit for a song that ended up in a Lexus commercial at the beginning oh, of the year. Oh, very so cool. Kind of, yeah, that was the largest and only sync placement. So it's very misleading. It looks like I have a <laughs> lot of <laughs> yeah. experience, but I kind of just like tripped and fell into a pretty pretty substantial placement that's, that's amazing not for me, all you need is one big one like a 20 million dollar placement you're set that's all you need oh yeah if this <laughs> one was 20 million dollars i would actually be on the beach and not just background. <laughs> exactly you buy your own beach it's funny you bring up we bring up placements because uh every once in a while i get like an ass cap check it's like or uh, that direct deposit i guess that's a reminder yeah. of former times and uh, i got one today for 18 dollars because an episode of the hills that my old band was on just aired in like china or something and i was like oh look at that someone's going to the mall <laughs> Eighteen dollars. Like, yeah, like everyone, line up. We're going to Moss Tacos. I can get five. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that royalties might have actually come from me. I'm, I'm a big reality TV show. Oh, right on. Gal. Well, to you, yeah, I say so thank you. I think you, I then. might have actually, I might have paid you those eighteen dollars with my. Well, I appreciate that. Viewing. And now I can yeah. shave this silly goatee off with that eighteen dollars you sent me. I'm so thankful. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> That's awesome. So you're playing the show this Friday. It's the 21st Friday night at the East Room. It's with Lauren Strange and Black Moon Mother, both bands that I've played on the show many a times. That's a cool triple bill. I mean, I feel like it's going to be a good turnout. Now it's ten dollars to get in. Shows at eight. The dance floor is open. Is that true? I saw that on the poster. Yeah, um, I think they, they kind of switched from the table reservation vibe to an open dance floor. So it should be exciting. Yeah, I mean, it's like, I mean, it's wild. I mean, I haven't played a show since last March. So yeah, so it's been a minute. I'm anxious and very, very nervous at the same time, I hope. There's a yeah. lot of people who are like, I'm so excited to come catch the show. And I'm like, I don't know, maybe come to the next one. I don't know if I'm going to go to the it's funny how fast that goes away. I went to, uh, I flew up to Alaska last uh, July because yeah. cases were low. So there was a couple, uh, this band I know needed a fill in drummer. And so we go up there and play these shows. And I was, ter- I hadn't played a show in six months probably. And I was like, terrified i was texting my sister for some reason i was like i'm really nervous to play this show and and it's funny how fast we forget oh we've played dozens of shows it's it becomes an insecure thing when you don't keep up with it yeah absolutely we were just me and my bandmate and my producer his name is jesse brock he's a dope musician and has like he's in a several prog rock bands but he helps me do all my live show stuff and i was playing i play on like an spd pad at yeah. some points and I mean, I wrote these songs, like, and I know the drum pattern because I helped create them. And then I'm sitting here playing that on the, and I'm like, oh my, like, what am I doing? Like, I don't even, <laughs> I don't know which hand is which. I'm like, oh God, I hope I don't mess this up on Friday. But yeah. fingers crossed, fingers crossed, I get it, I get it going again. But. <laughs> no, I think it's going to be awesome. Well, one thing I yeah. do with bands when they come on the show is I play a five random question game. But I always ask the artists if they like to play because one time a guy refused. So, Notel, would you like to play the five random question game? I would game? love to play. Right are there any gotcha questions? So nope. not gonna give me, it's like trivia. Right? Nope, I'm no, no trivia, no, no traps to try to get you canceled, nothing like that, I promise. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Five random questions wouldn't to tell on the local buzz. So they just announced the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame uh, nominees that just came out a couple days ago. The Foo Fighters are getting in, which would mean Dave Grohl is going to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame two times. I want to ask you, that's two times too many, or he should be in there a third time just for simply being Dave Grohl? Um, uh, I mean, the Foo Fighters are classic. I feel like it's that's a band that, regardless of what genre you're familiar with, that you know Foo Fighters and you know their music. So I feel like, why not three? You yeah, know what I mean? Absolutely. Like three's a better number than two. Yeah, Over absolutely. <laughs> Very well deserved. And just being a nice guy, he should be in there. Question number yeah. two, wouldn't to tell on the local buzz. So I wanted to ask you, once upon a time I was in a band, I was a kid, so you can excuse how bad the band name was. We were called One Lone Car, and we showed up one time and the marquee said One Lone Cat. I have no idea why. But uh, a couple of days ago, I was talking about you, and someone kept referring to you as Notella. Uh, so what is yeah. the worst mispronunciation of your name have you ever had? I think I think Nutella is good, but I think I just kind of lean into it. I'm like, hey, if Nutella or Rotel Peppers and Onions wants to sponsor me, I'm down for that because I think I can make both of those work in a branding situation. So, there you okay. go. <laughs> I love that. It's like a mispronunciation gone right. I love that. Yep. <laughs> Question number three with Nutella on the local buzz. So this showed up at the studio today. I have no idea why. This is a real thing. It is a pillow and it's a giant biscuit. If you can see this. 
Yeah, yeah. So I have no idea why. Uh, and I wanted to ask you, I should toss it or I should put it up on my couch and just never address it when people ask about it. Does it act like it's always oh, been there? Definitely. Definitely the latter. Definitely the latter. Yeah. The magical <laughs> sure. biscuit keep- pillow. <laughs> pillow is, is a cemented in your life forever. As far as I'm <laughs> it really is. It's like my favorite pillow ever. Question number four, I'm going to tell on the local buzz. So what is one trend you'd like to see less of in the music industry in 2021? Gosh, one trend I'd like to see less of. Yeah. Ooh. Wow, there's so many of them. Um, <laughs> I think forcing people to join TikTok. Yeah. I think it's like people always ask me to join TikTok. I'm like, in in what way? Like TikTok is yeah. not. I like to consume it. I don't want to create it. I think TikTok is great for some people. It's not for me. Yeah. And stop making me try to join TikTok. I just want to I just want to consume it. Yeah, and why is that you always know? I was just having that conversation someone was trying to get me to join up and I was like am I supposed to dance or something? Like what is the point of me having a TikTok page? You can see it on everything else. Like we already have so many social media platforms. Yeah. <laughs> That's it's funny. Great. I'm not knocking TikTok. I don't want anybody to like ban me from TikTok, <laughs> but I just don't want to make a TikTok video. Yeah, so. it's the it's the new peer pressure. They used to offer me drugs, and now they try to get me to join TikTok. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Question number 5 with Natel on the local bus. So let's say it's Friday night your first show back since 2020 you walk out on the stage at the east room tons of people standing there you grab the microphone what is the first thing you say to that crowd there's a oh my god i can't believe i'm up on stage right now (laughs) probably if i'm being if i'm being really honest i'd probably say something along the lines of like i hate performing but i am i definitely undervalued and underappreciated what performing did for me and for others i love it last year so that's probably what i would say i love it that's amazing and then lauren strange are going to tell give me the microphone back you're not even on yet it's gonna be great <laughs> well, i love well thank you for playing you passed you beat you beat the test you beat it <laughs> i love it so where can people find your stuff at what, what's like all your handles and everything i know you're on instagram you're not on tiktok you're on instagram you're on twitter what are your handles on yeah. there everything is the same it's at no tell music i tried to keep it pretty simple but uh you can find me on spotify you can find me on apple music any of the streaming platforms Instagram and Twitter. My Twitter is basically me just retweeting things. So yeah, yeah, I'm not that funny online. But. <laughs> <laughs> I love that though. I feel yeah. like um, what's the rest of 2021 looking like for you too? Are you feeling maybe more shows? Are you thinking more yeah. music coming out? Or yeah, I have. Um, I'm trying to drop like a handful more singles, but I mean, you plan for everything and the plan goes right out the window. So I'm not going to say a number just so no one holds me accountable for that. But I'm hoping to keep dropping singles. And then I have another show, a hold for a show at uh, Exit In on July 8th. Oh, nice. Really about. I love that. I love seeing that they're opening back up. And I don't know if they're going to do all their shows outside or not, but I'm just super pumped that we almost lost the place and everybody banded together. That was a really cool moment to see that. Like everybody just banded together and got it, you know? Yeah. It's really amazing, honestly. I think like uh, just based on what this particular city has been through in the past year and a half, it's like it can't really catch a break. But it's yeah. definitely it made me appreciate Kind of the community and everyone banding together especially the creative community it's like they don't want to lose those yeah. aspects of of our city that were so important so like the venues and i don't know i just think it's been pretty wonderful to watch yeah and it's hard to see so many classic venues go um i'm from st louis originally and i, I don't know if you're familiar with that place but there was a club called mississippi nights growing up and uh, everybody played there from like billy joel and uh, the chili peppers and nirvana before they blew up and uh, they tore it down and turned it into a casino parking lot. But I remember when they uh, tore it down, Kurt Cobain had signed the back wall. And so they took a yeah. saws on, they sawed it out and put it in the Hard Rock Cafe, St. Louis. And what's funny is my buddy signed right below Kurt's name, my buddy who's not famous at all. And so he always will be like, at dinner with the fam, so cool to see my autograph still in the Hard Rock Cafe. It's like, bro, that is not you. <laughs> I mean, I admire the hustle, but it's not you. <laughs> if, if I was your buddy, I'd be doing the exact same thing. I'd be like, that's me. That's me. <laughs> yeah. Immortalized forever. I actually have a funny story about Nirvana. I'm like a, a pretty big Nirvana fan, but don't don't ask me to name any songs because I'm going to blank and not be able to name a song. No, I will. One. I promise. But the uh, I was in a like a history of rock and roll class, and our teacher was just roasting Nirvana fans, right? Oh, wow. And she's like, oh, the posers that like the poser Nirvana fans would be wearing Nirvana t shirts. And I like look down and I'm like, oh my God, I'm wearing a Nirvana t-shirt. Like, <laughs> and then she takes it one step further and she's like, but the extra posers would wear a flannel shirt over the Nirvana t-shirt. I looked at it, I'm like, 
oh my god i'm wearing a black <laughs> shirt oh my god you're on a t-shirt and i like look at the kid next to me i'm like dude she's talking about me like that's literally the exact outfit that i'm wearing right now that is amazing <laughs> Whenever people talk about Nirvana, I'm like, man, that's so embarrassing. (laughs) Yeah, she was calling you out. That's amazing. Yeah, I'm like, oh, God. (laughs) It is one of those bands I've noticed it's a brand. It's like the Ramones in a way. Like, I feel like this, maybe the generation now does just wear the shirt sometimes and it kind of gets hard. It skews the line. I think I was at a Target and they had Nirvana shirts and Foo Fighters shirts. Like, oh, we're at that point in life now. Okay, awesome. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Have you ever seen those Nirvana shirts? It's actually a picture of Hanson. Yeah, those are amazing. (laughs) Those are those are incredible. I bet you some people probably believe it's actually them too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like I don't know why. If you didn't know what like Kurt Cobain looks like, you'd be like, oh yeah, Nirvana, like totally. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, Natel, it's been an honor to have you on the show. Sufjan Stevens is out now. The show Friday night, the twenty first at the East Room. Lauren Strange, Black Moon Mother, ten bucks to get in. Show at eight. And next time we do an interview, I'm going to have you live in the studio like a normal person, and we'll get out of this whole Zoom universe, and it'll be great. But you can bring your beach with you. It'd be perfect. Perfect, yeah. You bring the biscuit pillow, I'll bring the oh, beach. I, I 100% will. It looks like a hamburger <laughs> pillow, too. <laughs> so it's funny. <laughs> well, I will well, see you, you soon. thank you so much. No, thank you.